All right, hello everybody. So we got a special video today. Um, I am going to do an updated version of the STEM imaging demo where we try to shoot the resolution spec at 200 kilovolts. So this machine uh, should be capable of sub 80 picometer resolution at 200 kilovolts. So the test sample for this is silicon. And when you look along a 112 direction in silicon, you see uh, pairs of dumbbells like this. And these dumbbells are separated by 78 picometers. So this corresponds to the 444 lattice fringe spacing. Okay. So this direction here from left to right um, would correspond to a 111 direction. The into the page direction would be 112. And then the up and down direction would be a 110 uh, family of direction. Okay, so we have a sample in here. Um, this is actually the sample I made in the PFIB lamella prep demo. Okay, so we're going to see just how good it is, and we're going to try and uh, resolve this. Okay, all right. So, so we'll start kind of from the beginning here, assuming you're just sitting down to the microscope. So we'll click the alignments tab, click 200 kilovolts RSC. Click apply. Open up the column valves. Okay, so I have I have two FEG registers saved here. So we're gonna use the one for nano probe today. And the beam might have drifted, so we might have to find it. So we'll click set here. Okay, and we can't see the beam. So what we can do is Mag down into LM mode. And now I also know that if we move up here, there we go. So this sample is blocking it. If we move up here based on how I loaded the grid. Uh, we should get open space. And so we see open space. So perfect. Okay, there we go. All right, so we'll drive back down. So the sample I put on post number one. So we have to find post number one here. I should say the one dot post. Okay, there's two dots, no, three dots. There we go, three dots. There's three dots, there's two dots. And that should be one dot, there we go. And there's the sample. So the monochromate, monochromator uh, drift is, or shift, I should say, is still probably off a little. So we will manually tune that in a minute here. But for now, just finding the area of interest here and then heading back into SA mode. So we have enough beam here, so we can set the sample at eucentric height. So we'll push eucentric focus. Okay, and then I can see actually, if you look along the edge of the E-beam platinum, you see a dark fringe. So I know we're over focused, so that means I need to move the stage down. So I'm holding the negative Z button. Till I get my minimum contrast right about there. Okay. And now we're going to have to make another tweak once we're in, um, once we're in STEM mode, we're going to deviate from this a little bit, but this is good enough. So, I mean, just looking at the sample, the sample looks really good here. So there should be plenty of, um, plenty of good area to work with. All right. So what we will check in TEM mode here 
are a few things. Um, so we're going to check the alignment of the gun here, or the monochromator. So again, the configuration of this system is it has a monochrom monochromator with an XFEG. So you have a continuously adjustable gun lens here. So you open up monochromator, tune, and then shift and focus. Now your intensity knob controls your gun lens. So now you can focus it till you see the whole beam, and you can see we're not quite centered inside of the C2 aperture rim. So you go ahead and center it, and then you can spread it back out. So I keep this um, keep this around positive 40, so positive value is better for doing uh, stem work. And so we'll leave that just about positive 40. Okay, and so we're all set with the monoch monochromator. Um, this should stay good for basically the whole session. In several hours, the drift will be off and we'll need to do it again, but we should be good for a while now. Um, next thing we can check is the C2 aperture alignment. Okay, so we want to, we're going to use the 70 when we, when we do stem mode. Um, but to check this, we want to make sure that we are in um, two condenser mode with the C3 lens off. So you go to beam settings. Click free control and then click the C3 off radio button. Okay, and now you can align this just like you would like a Talos. Let me turn off some of these here so we just have the circle marks. Okay, and you can see it looks good here. So the centering on this microscope uh, is, you know, transfers well between TEM and STEM mode. Okay, so I don't have to realign the the aperture once I hit it, I'll go into stem mode. Okay, so this is fine. Um, so we can go ahead and click TEM to turn us back into three condenser mode. Okay, and so now really the only other thing I need to do um, before I go into stem mode is kind of get like a, you know, a, a good zone axis alignment or a rough zone axis alignment. So, you know, it, it, it goes down to, um, obviously, now where do you want to image, you know, form the image? So, I mean, like, here's, so here's the chromium layer you can see, right? So this is the chromium, and then this is the E-beam platinum. Uh, if we were interested in imaging near the surface, right, we would want to target this area for zone axis alignment. Um, if we want to do that, just for the sake of argument here, because that would kind of simulate, you know, what we would do in reality. So we can go into diffraction mode here. Okay, so we can see there's the open Lowy circle, so we're off by quite a bit here. So I know from my tilt map, that's a positive beta adjustment. Okay, so we can see the circle kind of closing a little bit. We'll head back into image mode. And because I adjusted the tilt, particularly the beta, um, my sample is going to be deviated from eucentric, so I have to refocus with the Z. Yep, right about there. Okay, it's in temp mode. I can click that. It does the same thing. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, so we're a little closer. So you can see this is from the chromium, right? This, these nice, well-defined rings. All right, so we're getting much closer here. So I can actually show you um, in the diffraction pattern, so the spot that corresponds to the, um, the 444 uh, lattice spacing. So you can kind of see that. So the four, so this is a one 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 oriented wafer. So this is the direct beam. So it's actually, this is one one one, two two two, three three three, and then four four four. Okay, so this would be the spot right here. All right, so we're we're getting closer. Tilt beta some more. Um, now we can make a little bit of an alpha adjustment.
So this is the tricky part, right? Is you're trying to get you're trying to get good zone axis alignment at a you know at a region of interest, right? Um, so this looks pretty good right in here. We should have some areas that are reasonably close. Okay, yeah. So this is this is good in here. Um, we can also kind of cruise around here just to see when you have a spot where the zone axis alignment is good. Um, usually you can see like a confluence of like bend contours. So it might be somewhere down in here as well. Yeah, so it's getting kind of close there. This area is a little bit thinner, I think, than, um, than what we had. Um, might make more sense to try. Well, I mean, let's try doing it from the you know spot we had set before, since we're trying to do this like it would be in real life. Yeah, the sample looks good. Really, no, not a lot of roughening or curtaining here. Okay, yeah, so that's good enough. All right, so we will leave that as is. And now to start with, I'm going to pull this sample out of the view here. And then we will go into STEM mode. Okay, so now in STEM mode, um, we can set the spot number and the convergence angle. So I'm going to go to spot size 10. Um, that's going to give me a little bit less than 20 picoamps. Um, so, I mean, if you could use nine, your probe's going to be a little bit bigger. And since we're trying to, you know, squeeze the smallest probe out, we can. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with 10. Now with the angle here, so if we pull up, this was the last corrector tuning I did, okay, about a week ago. So it's telling us we're good out to 28 millirad, okay? Right now it's at 22. So I'm going to push this out just a little bit more, okay? I'm going to go to 25. And actually, I can show you this here because we can calculate this inside um, S core. Okay. So, right here, if I go to, where is it? Probe semi, okay. Probe semi angle, 25 millirad. Okay. And so my current is 17 okay, picoamps. So I can click update. Okay. So it's telling me. My probe size is about 73 uh, picometers, okay? Um, if I cut the angle down a little to 22, okay, it gets a little bit bigger. So, um, so we'll stick with the 25. And again, according to our phase plate here, we should be just fine, okay? So we'll go ahead and click update. Again, we're trying to squeeze the most we can and get that... Um, get that sub 78 or sub 80 picometer resolution, okay? I'll go ahead and push you centric focus because I adjusted my condenser lenses here to get the new angle, okay? And then I'm going to turn diffraction off to get an image of the probe, okay? Okay, and so we see an image of the probe here. I'll switch to HDR. All right, so now, um, Regarding the lens settings here, if, if your microscope has been set up properly, there should be no need to um, adjust your intensity or your objective lens from the eucentric focus values, okay? You should be seeing something like this with this sharp caustic spot in the middle here and then this diffuse halo. So this is actually something I was a little mistaken regarding um, with like the corrector tuning video, but this is actually correct in what you want to see, okay? Um, so we can do some adjustments to the shape here. So you can see the spot is not centered inside of the diffuse area. So we can open up S-Core here, find state of correction, manual correction, beam tilt, and multiplier three, okay? And you can see, right, I'm using my, my arrow keys. So you can see that spot isn't moving as I'm tilting the beam, okay? So, th and this is good because it means that my Objective lens and condenser lens values have been set properly, okay? Just like we would hope, right, if they were set 
correctly. Okay, so I can center this inside the caustic spot. Um, as far as adjusting the shape here, so you can see, right, that this image is asigmatic. Now, if it, so, if you're going to adjust the image here, the we're not really sure at this point if this is twofold astigmatism um, of the probe or if this is objective astigmatism. Okay, so you could correct this. You know, if if there's no objective astigmatism, then you would want to correct twofold astigmatism in S core using ATA1. Um, actually, the other thing we can do, let me go back here. Okay. All right, I'm going to reset. Okay, so if you find stem auto tuning, we're going to reset all of these here. Okay, so these are um, basically the stigmator panel here. So condenser, probe A1, and probe B2, um, you want all of those set to zero here um, before we start the tuning. So you, if you have stem auto tuning, you can click and then click reset. Your other option here is if you find stigmator, you can activate each of these and then right click and then reset. Okay, you do that again for condenser, probe A1 and probe B2. Okay, um, let's just for the sake of argument, let's assume that we are looking at objective stigmatism here. So we can open up objective stigmator and stigmate the probe image. Okay, just like that. Okay. Now the rest of these I'm not going to adjust um, from in here uh, yet. We're going to do most of the adjusting inside S core, All right? And so we can go ahead and center the beam using user beam shift. So you want to do this again from inside S core. You don't want to do this from inside the UI. Okay. And then we can turn diffraction back on. Okay. Um, you want your mag to be set to kind of a reasonable value, like 225 or higher. I can bump this up a little more. I wouldn't go lower than this. We'll leave it there. That's fine, though. Uh, let me turn off condenser stigmator. Okay. So now, um, here's my ronky gram. This is a little tough to see, so I'm going to bump my camera length up here a few clicks. Okay. And now I'm going to, you know, let's go one more just for fun here. And I'm going to find direct alignments and click diffraction alignment, and I'm going to center my direct disc because I'm over vacuum now, so that's all I have. So this is important because this now um, sets the reference point for moving apertures, okay? All right, we're gonna find the apertures panel, and we're gonna change condenser two now to the biggest one, which is the 150. Okay, so this actually looks Reasonably well centered. Um, can probably improve it a little bit here. Okay, that's good. All right, and now we need to get some sample under the beam. So I remember the sample was down here. So I'm going to push forward with the joystick, and I should come up under the sample now. There we go. Perfect. Okay. And so now what I want here. See, I'm not sure if I'm looking at platinum or I think I'm looking, uh, I'm probably looking at platinum here. So, okay. So we want to get to as much of a blow up condition as we can. So we can use the, the Z axis buttons here to get us close. Okay. So that's pretty close. So I can see actually pretty clearly here, there's a lot of twofold astigmatism. Okay. So I'm going to open up S core and click ATA one. And then you want to make sure this is on bit zero because this is very, very coarse. Okay. But we're just trying to, okay, we're trying to get that streaking to go away. Um, there's probably also some axial comma. Yeah, so if I go back and forth here, so you can see, let me change the response time here. You can see as I go back and forth, right, the sweeping, okay? So I've corrected the twofold, okay, but now I've got axial comma, okay? So we can actually do this. Um, we can go to the stigmator panel and click probe B2, okay? And then we can adjust the modulation here. Okay, like that. And then we can go back to S core and we want to use ATB2 and bit multiplier nine works good for this. Okay, and again, we're using the arrow keys 
to minimize the sweeping. So now the up down arrow keys predominantly adjust side to side sweeping and the left right arrow keys predominantly adjust up and down sweeping, right? Just like you would expect. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's a little reversed. Okay, so you can see, now I've probably overshot that a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go the other, I'm clicking the right arrow now. Okay, and that's pretty good right there. Okay, you can see it's going straight in and out. Okay, so I can turn turn this off and that'll turn off the pulsing. Okay, um, and you can see I have my piezo move Z activated here. So if you have a piezo enhanced stage, this is great for um, precisely focusing by using your Z here. So you can see, right, when I get this here, I'm seeing kind of this nice flat region and kind of like six fold symmetry on the edges. And this is basically what we're looking for here. So we are, are really close. Um, we can't get twofold any closer with the course. So we can leave this alone now. And what I'm going to do now is go back to apertures and put the 70 back in. And so we're going to check um, the centering of the caustic spot um, one more time here. Because in my experience, uh, sometimes when you adjust um, B2, there's a little bit of a change to that when you when you go back and look and adjust the beam tilt. So we'll turn the fraction off. Okay, and really it's not off by much here. Uh, let me turn, so now you can see, right? So the, um, the probe looks astigmatic again. So now since we've corrected twofold in the probe, we know this is, this is actually objective astigmatism here. Okay, so we can actually go back here, click stigmator objective, Okay, like that. All right, so this is off a little bit, not a whole lot, but we'll come back here and click beam tilt and go ahead and center it. Perfect, okay. All right, we'll turn our screen marks back on, we'll turn diffraction back on. So a really neat feature here, um, if you don't, whatever panel you don't have here in your tab, you can you can obviously go to another tab if you know where it is, or you can pull it up over here. Okay, so I could go to Tune here where I have direct alignments, or I could just come down here and I could find it. Okay, direct alignments. Um, okay, so when you switch back into diffraction on, um, make sure this is centered because obviously that's the centering position. Um, for the um, aperture. So this is good, so I'm, I'm not going to adjust it, but I am going to find the apertures panel. And again, I'm going to bump us up to the 150. Okay, so and the other thing to note here, my focus knob is um, coupled to objective here. Okay, so it's not coupled to any of the condenser um, as part of this, right? So you really don't want to be messing with any of these, assuming they're set properly, okay? There shouldn't be a need to mess with them. So your objective, your focus should be set only to objective. If you click here on stem imaging, okay, so you can see this is set to intensity objective, which means that my intensity knob is controlling condenser and my objective is controlling focus. So if I wanted to be, you know, a little more careful, I could just click objective, right? And now my intensity knob, so I'm spinning the intensity knob, it's not doing anything, okay? Um, but my focus knob will control objective, okay? All right, so let me pull, okay, back in here, okay? And my two-fold astigmatism still looks really good. So I will go back to the stigmator panel, click probe B2, and we'll just we'll make sure that, yeah, and this looks fine, okay? So again, we're gonna do some auto-tuning as well um, once we, you know, get the image, but but that's fine. I don't need I don't need to do anything with with B2. Okay, so we're good, and now we can put the 70 micron aperture back in. Okay, and make sure that it's centered. So I mean, you know, it is pretty accurate with its aperture placement when it goes, you know, from aperture to aperture. But don't ever assume that it just goes back to the right spot. Um, you know, it's never quite perfect, okay? 
All right, so we're good there. We can set the camera length now to 115, which would be good for using um, or doing HADF. Let me deselect adjust, okay. Switch the flu cam to natural. Insert the detector. Okay, we'll switch to HDR mode. Let me turn off the screen marks. You can see that not quite centered inside the detector rim. So I can go to direct adjustments and do diffraction alignment and center inside the rim, just like that. Okay, so now we will come back to acquisition mode or acquisition in Velox and click HADF. And there we go. All right, so so now I know that um, this is a 111 wafer. So 111 is this way. So that means my dumbbells um, are actually running like this. Okay, they're actually running up and down. So what I'm going to do then is I am going to scan rotate this 90 degrees. Okay, so now my dumbbells are running um, like this. Okay. Okay, so now what I have to do is I can adjust my contrast and brightness here. And again, once I get to the atomic level, I'm going to do this again. Um, but now what we have to do is we have to find a spot where the zone axis alignment is good. And so we can kind of see it looks pretty looks really good actually right over in here so I mean I guess we can uh, I guess we can use that okay so and this is nice we have the platinum strip here so this kind of gives us a little bit of a okay so now uh, m most of your focusing you want to do here with with Z um, with stage Z and not with um, your fo like course, course focusing. Okay, so I can kind of see like this interface is you know a little out of focus. So actually, let me see if I can get it. Okay, so that's a little bit better right there. Okay, so this looks good in terms of the zone axis. Okay, so we'll go ahead and mag in something about like this. Okay, and now I can actually use my piezo stage to, okay, I got MFY set to piezo Z, so I can use this to dial in and get my atomic res here. Come on, where are you? Let me see here, stage approaching end. Okay, so let's reset. All right, let me freeze this and take a look here. So let me switch to natural. Okay, so we're a little little far. There we go, okay. So I'm adjusting course Z now. Now I can adjust. Okay, so let's go back here. There we go. Okay, so I can kind of see it right, right there. Okay. All right. Make sure your focus step is set to one. Okay, so there we go. All right, so I can start to see it coming in here. So I'm going to have to do some stigmating here. Move this out of the way. And now this is where I can actually... I can use my condenser stigmators inside the stigmator panel. Okay, so we'll use. Oh, there we go. So, oops, there we go. Whoops. Okay, I had that set to course. Okay, there we go. Ah, uh, much better. Okay. Okay, so there we are. So those are the pairs of dumbbells. So now what we can do is we can tune the image. So we can start by, um, so there's a few options for this. So we can do it inside here, inside STEM auto-tuning, but the if we do it inside um, 
Sherpa, this is beneficial, just it gives us a little bit more feedback, okay? So we'll run C1A1 corrects focus and two-fold astigmatism. A2B2 does, does both of those and three-fold and axial comma. So let's go ahead and do A2B2 and we'll do it inside Sherpa. So go ahead and pause it. We activate, we have Sherpa open already here and we click OptiStem and then A2B2. So this usually takes a few minutes to do. So doing um, C1A1 is quick. That's only a few seconds. Um, but the, um, yeah, doing the A2B2 correction, because those are higher order aberrations, so th those take a little bit longer. And what we're hoping to see is, is, so this is the real component for B2, the imaginary, and this is what we're hoping to see is something like this where you have, you know, an upside down parabola. Yeah, so this is already good here. We're already in the ballpark. So we did manually correct B2 before, obviously, um, but this is just fine tuning it. Um, correcting A2, so again, it's threefold astigmatism, is, is my understanding is it's kind of tough to do um, manually, especially looking at the image. So um, we have the ability to do this um, using, you know, Sherpa or STEM auto tuning. So let's, uh, let's let it work for us. So it's done. Okay, that was quick. All right. Okay. All right, so now now the question is, can we All right, so let's do we'll do a slow scan here. Sample's pretty stable. So again, these are our dumbbells, right? Uh, from left to right. So where are my magwise 7.2? You should be able to see them here. So again, the like the test here is we're looking for a spot in the FFT um, corresponding to 444. And it should also be kind of obvious from the image. Now we may need to tweak with the focus a little bit here, but um, you know, we'll see. What's kind of neat, it looks like an interstitial there or something like that. You can also try doing series acquisition here. Let me blank this. Okay, so there is one, two, three, so there's the spot right there. So there's a little bit of instability in the picture here. Um, let me unblank here. All right, and let me try now, I'm gonna try manually stigmating here. Okay, condenser's already activated. Well, it doesn't look astigmatic, does it? We might need to try a different spot. I wonder if this is just a little too thick here. Um, I don't think it should be. All right, let's try a series acquisition. So do two microseconds and 10 frames. Nice thing about doing this is it has like a noise smoothing effect when you integrate the frames. I mean, this looks basically okay. Um, yeah, it might be off a little bit in terms of, this. I mean, so this, you know, that 
very critical, right, that your zone axis alignment is good uh, when you do this. So if this is off by enough, it can, you know, impact you. So let me blank. Okay, and we'll go ahead here, optimized periodic images. And there we go. So there is, so there's the spot right there. There's, yep. So there's one, two, three, there it is. Um, now the question is, can we see it in the image? So um, one thing we can do here, if we draw a line profile and we draw across the dumbbells like this, and then we integrate, okay? So we should be able to see, and we can integrate over a fairly large distance here. We should be able to see like a dip here in the top. Um, sometimes you have to kind of tweak these till it's you know perfectly aligned, but we're not really seeing it. So I mean, it's it's saying it's here in the FFT, but it's not showing up particularly well here, um, just in the in the image. And it should be able to do that. So let's check a couple other things here. Minimize this. Let me pause and let me drag the. I mean, the zone axis looks okay. Um, let me try moving this down a little bit here. Not, we may need to try going to a little bit thinner area. Yeah, so everything's got to be perfect when you're trying to, you know, get the get the sub 80 picometers here, for sure. <laughs> So your margin for error is, is not high um, with alignment, with zone axis, with, with everything, basically. Okay. So it looks fine there. It doesn't look astigmatic. So the dumbbells are not well separated. Let me try here. Try a slower scan here. So I just did a little bit, just changed the focus a little bit there. And we may need to try a little bit of a thinner area. So that, I mean, there's some thinner spots kind of down toward the bottom of the lamella. So we'll go ahead and, and um, maybe move there. Yeah, I mean, once again, so you're seeing the spot there, but it's just, it's not very strong. Okay, so, all right, so let's, let's change up spots here. All right, we'll head down here. Right click center beam. All right, so we can see that. Okay, so we're off here by quite a bit. So that's a beta minus adjustment. So we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, then we'll refocus with the Z.
Okay. Oh, okay. So there should be a good spot right up in there. So, all right. So we got to move back down here. Just right click center beam. So usually once you do the auto tuning, like A2, B2 um, should be good for basically the entire session. Um, you shouldn't need to mess with those again. Um, but the C1, A1, you, you will probably need to, you know, adjust again at some point. Oh, well, focus, of course, right, obviously, you know, depending on where you are. So, okay, so I need to move this way. All right, looks good. Okay, we'll focus with the Z here. Like that. There we go. All right, so we'll see if this gets us any better here. Yeah, I think this is a little promising, more promising here. Okay, now we can run C1A1 again here. So we'll go ahead and do that. We can just run it from within here. This is really quick. This is, takes like 10 seconds. We'll see how close this gets us. Okay, yeah, I think we're better shape here. All right, so we got some drift, um, but I think... We're better here. Come on, stop moving. All right, let's try do a series acquisition here and see. Yeah, I did a, did a lot of stage movement here, so it's a little bit of drift. Let's see how well this overlays. All right, so the spot is there, but it's not not very obvious from the image. Um, all right, let me move, minimize this again. Okay, it looks okay. Trying with the stigmators again here. All right, let's try it again here. A little less drift.
I mean, the spot's there. So, I mean, the question is, though, can we see it? We can't really see it, even though it's showing up in the FFT. I mean, if we... We should be able to see it when we integrate this across. So we can integrate this across a bunch of dumbbells here. Okay, but we don't really see it, do we? It's not really showing up there. I mean, in some cases it kind of, yeah, but it's not really, not really that evident. Um, I mean, the spot's there. It's telling us it's there, but yet at the same time, all right, do we need to try yet another spot? Let's mag out here. See here it gets a lot thinner. Yeah, so here it's we're still off by quite a bit with the beta tilt, so we'll go ahead and and we'll target another spot. And that's the bottom of the lamella, obviously, so Center beam. Yeah, so you can see a pretty marked difference here. Yeah, so we're still still off by quite a bit right here, I think. Should be a spot or two in there. We had a focus, so we'll refocus. Okay, so up here, I think there's a spot. Spot that I overshot apparently. This looks, yeah, a little more promising. Oop. Stage approaching end. All right, so I've got to reset the piezo. Reset. Okay, we'll go to the other side. There we go. Okay. So this look, yeah, this is noticeably thinner here. So center beam. Okay, yeah, this looks this looks better here. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead here. Increase our detector contrast a little. Okay. 
Okay, let's go ahead and do it now. Yeah, it's much thinner here, as you can see. I mean, basically I'm seeing mostly a direct disc and not really like strong Kikuchi diffraction. So at 300 kilovolts, that might not be as much of an issue, but let's see what we got here. Processing. Hey, there we go. All right, so I think we can probably see it here. Um, now if we drag this across, we can integrate. Yeah, so you can see the split in those dumbbells coming through there. And again, you can, if you average this over a lot of dumbbells, right? be able to see this. Okay, so it is a little bit it is a little bit noisy. Um, again you can tilt this till you kind of see yeah somewhere about in there. Alright, let's try Run auto tuning again here. I... Let's see what we get here. All right, let's try that. Let's try a little more signal to noise here. Do 20 frames. So yeah, the original video, I mean, I did a lot of that adjusting through the you know, Stigmator panel and the user interface. I mean, most, most of what you want to do, you want to do through S-Core and not through the through the UI, um, except for the final, like, fine-tuning, so. Okay, this is still looking pretty good. All right, let's take a look now. What's it saying? Optimize for periodic images. Yeah, so I'm in the spots there, it's, but it's not, I guess the focus was a little bit off still. Um, I had to defocus a little more. You can see that the focus is very small, so we're not deviated from eucentric focus very much at all, which is good, right? That's what you want to be.
Ah, there we go. So, so you can see it. One, one, two, three, four. There's the spot. I mean, if we put this in here, right? So, yep, there's the spot. So, all right. So we can try high pass filter just to get rid of that modeling there. And yeah, it looks pretty good there. So, I mean, if we draw across here, okay, integrate. Yeah, so then we can kind of see it here. So now it's possible that we could try running the auto tuning again here, actually, the A2, B2. Um, just to make sure, because you can see these are a little asymmetric, so that may mean that may mean a few things. So it may mean that our zone axis is a little bit off, but I don't think so. I mean, I think it looks good. Um, this looks maybe a little bit closer up there. It's a little tough though when you're you're looking through nothing here, so or just a just an empty uh, area on the not empty area, right? But just all right. Let's try running a two b two again here, just for fun. Or maybe not. Before we do that, let me stigmate the image again. It looks like it's, yeah, the two-fold is corrected well. It's going back and forth okay. Um, let me try, yeah, let's try running A to B2 again. So we will freeze it and head back here to Sherpa and do A to B2. Again, the FFT is telling us we're getting it, right? So the FFT is saying you have 78 picometer detail there in the picture. Um, it's just not showing up quite as strongly in the image as I would have liked. So, so we will see here. See if we can't get this to tune a little better. All right, let's see if it's, if it can get, it's going to try and correct B2 a little bit better, I can see. Yeah, so that's much better there. better too.
Okay, so it looks like it's done. All right. Ah, yeah, now there it is. I see it. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, yep. So I could tell on the FFT, right, because I could see some asymmetry in here, like some of the... Like these spots over here, and the opposite ones weren't quite as strong. So, yeah, but this looks much better now. So, sample's nice and still. So, this should be the money shot here. Yeah, there we go. There it is. Beautiful. Okay, so you can see very well, nicely defined out to there. So this should, I mean, you can see it very well, very well separated. Let's high pass filter it just to get rid of this, you know, fib garbage. But yeah, you can see pretty clearly how, how nicely separated those are. All right, so if we There we go. Oops, nope, we want to go up. So it's close. I'm a little confused as to why it's not showing, why these are not showing perfectly symmetrical. So there may be something still a little bit amiss here. Um, I wonder if it's with the stig. So. Still good there. Stigmator still on. All right, let's try here. A little bit better focus.
Yeah, I mean, you can see it there. So again, looks really nice. Nice symmetric AFFT. So let's filter high pass. And it looks good. So yes, you can see it here in some of these. Some of them are a little more distinct than others, but but yeah. So but clearly evident in um, in the FFT, right, and also in the image as well. So. Um, I mean, one thing we could try doing too, I don't know how much it'll help. We can try, if we average it, I don't know if that's going to really, no, not terribly. I mean, you can still see it there, but, but no, this is about as good as I would expect this. Let me get this off here. That was the, wait, no, this is the averaged one. Okay, we'll delete this one. Okay, but there it is. You're... 78, 78 picometers here at 200 kilovolts. So, all right. So I think someone is waiting for me now to use the microscope. So anyways, <laughs> all right, let me go ahead and uh, clean things up here. All right, we'll click done here. When we're finishing up in STEM mode, We'll stop the scan, reset the scan rotation to zero, and we'll hit the stem button. Um, if you adjust the, and as you can see where we were imaging, if you can adjust the pH, so these are already pretty close, but you can click reset here. Okay, so you have to do this independently of just, just the stage. Um, and then let me go ahead here. Close the column valves, and then reset holder. Let me go ahead and turn on the turbo pump for when I pull that out. So that's the video. Um, I wanted to, you know, do another one just going over. Um, a little bit more correctly how to do the stem alignment, you know, mainly through using S core rather than relying on the stigmator um, control panel and how the, you know, objective and condenser lenses should be set and the proper appearance of the probe. So as always, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please let me know. All right. Thank you.